A micro-earthquake is going to function along the same mechanics that a regular earthquake will. The rocks are under stress. Eventually, the stress that is building up on the rocks is going to exceed the force of friction that's holding the rocks into place, and then eventually the rocks will move. The rocks here at the focus are going to slip. And when those rocks slip, energy is released. So from the focus, we have a series of waves that are radiating out. And we call these waves body waves. These are going to be the P waves and the S waves that most people are familiar with. The farther we get away from the focus, the greater the distance between the arrival times of the P waves and the S waves is going to be. Eventually, those body waves are going to intersect with the surface at the epicenter. And then they become surface waves and start spreading out along the surface of the earth like ripples when you throw a rock into a pond. Uh, as far as sound accompanying earthquakes, uh, it's not something that you generally hear about a great deal. It's not impossible, but it's, it's not something that generally gets reported like we have seen with these Clintonville earthquakes where people are uh, reporting these loud pops that are occurring during the night. Um, if that is something that can happen more commonly with the earthquakes. I think it would be something that's generally a phenomenon that people would experience if they are close to the epicenter of the earthquake rather than farther away. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think it's that common.